Hey humans, my name is Aaron Rosenmund, aka Iron Cat, and thank you for joining me for yet another one of these series in the Iron Cat series. What we want to talk about today, fresh off of me coming back from RSAC 23, where I did a lab leveraging the Iron Cat, I am Iron Cat public repo that has a lot of the work that we're talking about in these episodes inside of it. Now, Inside this repo, you can go follow along with that workshop for a uh, limited time on using the Pluralsight Labs, or you can do it yourself. But the main point is what we're doing was micro TTP emulation. Now, rolling the back to what this is for is we're wrapping a bunch of tactics, techniques, and procedures into one piece of malware the same way a malware uh, creator would, and understanding how different evasions are done and really getting at how antivirus is not kind of the end all be all and where you really need to be testing your tools using a educational or testing malware like this. So this time, uh, last time we left off and we were able to drop in a few different nuggets of information. One of those in particular was actually the use of changing the names of different things. So here we have, um, I am Iron Cat, kind of V1, and that one got caught here in main go. So we have words in here. If I click in, let's take a look. We have words in here like encrypt, likely. So we have it in some of the notes, but there's 14 other places. So let's check it out. Lots of notes. But if the mode is encrypt, right? Um, encrypt file is one of the functions, and function names end up inside of the executable. So that's stuff that we would change in subsequent ones. So if we look here, see it's it's out of one here. Uh, I think maybe there's one note left, but instead we started changing the names of things to use words like deschwipped because we're you know getting swifty with it. So you can inswift or you can deschwipped. Um, and what we saw from that when we changed names like that uh, was the ability to where we look at the very first version has 41 detections in virus total. Uh, and we're going to full screen it here so you can kind of see more of this. But the second version, the one where we're deswifting and inswifting instead, uh, operated just fine and would turned up with 20 detections. Now, when we go into some of the testing, we found that if you change the uh, end name of the file, like all it was, because it would be dot encrypted and we've changed it to dot introp and things like that and kind of drastically change the way that we leverage the ransom note that was dropped, we instead would get um, just eight detections here, right? But one of those was still Microsoft. So what I want to do here is get into this Microsoft box. We're going to open up and take a look. We're going to copy the original one in a test case. Let's get in here and we can look at some of these tests that we had created. So these old variations, let's grab test one. So let's copy this in and see what happens. Okay, no detections there. And this has been a bit now, this has been at least a month or two since we had detections. There we go. So test two, it definitely found uh, some, a, a piece of ransomware found here. And this is ransomware file cryptor, right? And that's just, changing some of those function names and uh, the names of the files and of course the text inside of the ransom note that's dropped so that's going to get deleted let's go ahead and delete this one too and then of course let me hop in powershell and i want to show you get mp computer preference computer status there we go so let's get this you can see that the signatures were updated uh, as of the date of this recording so that is april 30th now that being true, um, let's shorten this up a little bit. Actually, you don't need that anymore. Okay. Same device. I'm going to go back and I'm going to copy the current version that's in that GitHub. And that one had uh, some of the functions names changed. And we used a tool called Defender Check, or I used a tool called Defender Check to identify what parts of that binary were offending the antivirus signature database, right? And this one, uh, we currently have no issues with. Uh, the point of this that I want to get it dig into is uh, that's a lot of work to go change all those names. So we look in here, we have deschwipped, 
Uh, there's a couple other things. Let's look at some of it. So we see these strings. It's still fine with Iron Cat, Go Pew Pew. Uh, but some of those were changed as well. I'm Iron Cat and you're not. It hasn't changed since, you know, for four years now, which is wild that that's not being detected. But look at what else this is doing, right? So I want to see... So we have a forward or a fake forwarder address in here. So this is just a header that's being dropped in there of 58.247. That is a Chinese-based IP. And so then I have it print out some Chinese characters. So just something to throw off uh, the forensics groups when they start identifying this stuff in there. Um, it's looking to come out to this server specifically, right? And if we copy that, let's, let's check out this server. I want to copy that link. Let's see what that IP address is. Can you still see this? Let me check. You can see it just fine. So NS look up this guy. Oh, that didn't work. Let's do it here. Copy that, paste it. Cool. So we get an address of 52.251. Remember that real quick. Let's go ahead and go back and look at some of the behavioral stuff from virus total. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Let's go ahead and connect to that anyway. And we get this lovely website that's been up for um, a while now. It lets you know that I'm Iron Cat, of course. And then drops in to a very fake uh, ransom note request here. Now, if someone wants to send me 1 million Uplexa, which I don't know, crypto's crashed now, so it's probably worth like $2, but I'll still take it. However, <clears throat> when we go in and look at even in this one with eight detections, or let's say one with 41, let's look at the behavior here ran through all of these uh, behavioral boxes. Uh, these didn't text to catch too much, right? Uh, but this was done back in the day, so this hash still matches the original hash. Um, but we don't see any of the information coming from this that matches any of those IPs and the IP traffic, right? Okay, that's not surprising uh, because it doesn't actually run thanks to the way that we use the arguments so you have to give it arguments so when we run through sandboxes they have they struggle with specific arguments there's no way for them to know which ones they can be and you can see that that's true because even with this we have 20 and then a bit in the future we ran this one you can still still kind of running it's gotten through and now sys internal says it found some stuff but if we go take a look at what it thinks it found none of those ip addresses are in there not even the fake one and same deal for uh, stuff that it thought it saw dropped. None of these files were actually dropped. And as promised, I wanted to show you this piece. So what is this malware actually doing? Why sh do I expect it to get caught? Well, previously you had seen it encrypts all the files and then starts up something that reaches out continuously via a scheduled task. But how does it do that? Well, if we go look, this extremely old version of this malware walks through all the files sets a key for the box, right? Uh, gives you a kittyhawk.txt uh, in every directory, which is one of the uh, changes for the new versions. The name of the file was changed, right? Um, and then let's dig in. Mm -hmm. Reaches out to that. None of that had to change at all. But it's writing a batch file to see Windows shadow.bat that contains a piece of code that deletes all the shadow copies on the machine so you can't recover it. That is known bad activity. It's also then writing a batch uh, string to this bat file inside C Windows that deletes all of the, the logs inside the Windows event logs. So that's also known bad and then runs it. This is using a key to registry to um, do an old uh, utilman ad so that when you use the, the shortcut keys for utilman, it actually launches a cmd.exe as admin. So that's kind of a very old technique for uh, modifying the registry, right? And it's writing that to see windows at net login.bat. And then if you continue to look at this, this is an old version. This one doesn't work running it in this way anymore. Uh, you have to have uh, system privileges, not just admin privileges. But it's going to use the CFC trick, which is when you change the system 32 exe that is CFC to actually you just rename CMD a copy of CMD.exe as CFC.exe, and then you press Shift five times, and all of a sudden, boom! Even if you're at login screen, you are now uh, admin. So it does that, writes all those files, and runs them. So we expect that this thing should get caught because when we use something 
like strings. Like if you just look at the raw strings inside uh, some of these files. So let's look, where are we here? Do I need to go inside of Ironcat CD? Ironcat V1, Ironcat V1. Okay, there we go. Okay, here they all are. That's what we want to see. And let me go ahead and go full screen. And I'm going to use strings on iaiprv1.1.1.exe. No matching files were found. Okay, it doesn't like that. Ah, there we go. All right, lots of strings. Now let's change this to strings and do a account. There we go. That changes the game a little bit. We got all kinds of stuff in here. And now let's do find string looking for uh, what was one of those really evil ones. Let's look for shadow copy or something like that. Let's go back up. VS admin. VSS admin. Ah, but the string was too long. So we went to go match it, but aired out because these strings were too long. But we see things like Iron Cat loves cheeseburgers. That's straight in here. And those batch strings are also just going to be smashed into this giant string that's inside this binary that has absolutely no uh, encryption whatsoever. And so that's what these antiviruses are detecting on. So when you did change things inside the binary file after it's compiled, that's how you evade them. But that does get old, right? So one thing I wanted to see is the one that we currently have uh, v1 I haven't uploaded the virus total so I am going to do that now I'm not a robot there we go oh man it thinks I'm a robot and I have to find motorcycles super bad at this I never know I'm like I think most of this is a bicycle and the rest of that's a human cool so this one has nine detections one more than we had previously but notice none of those are actually Microsoft now Here's the real test, right? We're going to take, uh, well, wait, this one already wasn't detected, and I want you to see um, this now. We're going to make a cmd.exe. We already ran D We ran this one before. But I want to do this rapidly. I don't want to have to do silly things like change it to dschwit or whatever, right? So the answer for this instead is I'm going to open this up. I'm going to get you back to a terminal that makes sense. Where are we? Let's hop into the source code. Cool. So we have that old IAAPRV source code, but we know that when I compiled, um, how do I make that every time it gets detected, like I've already uploaded a virus total now, so it's going to get detected again pretty soon, how to compile this in a way um, that it will obscure the strings for me. So instead, of using Go, I'm going to compile it using a tool called Garble. I'm going to use Tiny, trying to make that binary as small as I possibly can. And then I'm going to use this uh, flag for literals. I'm going to use a flag for seed random. Okay. Uh, build. And I'm going to do LD flags equals S and W. All right. So that gets rid of the paths uh, like we had done when we were previously building it. Uh, that will be coded into... Uh, the binary also gets rid of the debugging um, flags and then we're using a random thing that it's going to randomize some of those functions so when I show you some of these strings next time it's going to look quite a bit different uh, let's do that so any of those strings that we just talked about that get identified inside the binary those are called literals so we don't want those getting detected uh, in the same way if we use a random seed it will make those random every time inside the binary and then when it, when it runs at the time that it runs in memory, it will decrypt. But this kind of like lets you know how much of your antivirus or ADR or whatever it is, is actually doing in memory inspection for those same signatures, which is a really high overhead versus how much is just doing stuff that's on the disk, right? And so I just, I just overwrote this one is what I probably did, which is not necessarily what I wanted to do, but um, either way, here we go, 5-1, because I just hit midnight and we have our uh, V1, uh, point 0.1 here. So I'm going to copy IA v1.1. I'm going to make it IRA prv exe Cool. And now we have a point 0.2. And then we're going to copy this guy over 
to this desktop and make sure that it also doesn't get detected. There we go. No detections there. But let's do this. Let's just do it raw. I don't want to waste time with you all. Cool. Copy this because we're going to need admin privileges too and I didn't have an admin thing open. Cool. So that's on me. Now let's make SEMD here. Let's CD to that location where we always run it. Cool. IAI. There it is. In Schwipt, I believe. Schwa. Schwipt. Meow. Great. And I realize that's kind of tiny. There it goes. So it's encrypted everything now. We do have an alert here, right? That says, yeah, files waiting to be written. But we got Kitty Hawk written to the desktop. And I want to wait a second. There we go. Virus and threats found. Let's see what it thinks it caught here. Um, yep. So we got this bear foods MSM. Not really sure what that is. And then it caught something else too. Now here's the deal. Though it caught a bunch of stuff, did it stop anything? All right. Let's look at our protection history. Doesn't look like we have anything from today. Let's stir. Is IAI still here? We'll look at that. But is this encrypted? Encryptme.txt. We get kitty hot drip. There we go. And there's our location with our dope site. Let's go check and see. It looks like it might have actually caught this thing mid execution, which would be so cool. But, and one more thing before we dig into that again. If we strings this IAPRV, uh, this new one, we'll find that. Oh, let's do the, the heavy strings. Only the big strings, please. All right? We don't get the same kind of stuff we're used to. All of those functions right here, you know, they're declared are like random names. And that's what this is doing. It's getting rid of your requirement to rewrite your own functions. It does it for you. Okay. Gets rid of all those things that we expect to be detected. Now it looks like it caught it and actually deleted it, which is brand new windows. I can't believe you are doing that to me. You're killing me here. And then now it's detected this. So that's using the cloud protection. That's absolutely fantastic. Good, and that was on file access. So I completely cleaned that up. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to um, go evade that activity ourselves real quick. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Because some of this stuff did get popped when it went. And usually, in my opinion, it's specifically on these guys right here. Right? So I'm going to comment this stuff out or even if it tries to execute. So I'm curious now. And this one, control S. Let's go ahead and like, we are well into modifying this to be uh, version 1.2. Cool. Okay, now let's do this where we recompile and this is where the garble things super duper nice. We'll recompile it. And now it will be modifying this one right here. Fantastic. Now, let's copy that new one over here. Now, it had cloud protection on. Let's see if it gets it now. Nope, because we redid it, right? So it's not detecting it. I'm going to copy this into C drive here. Good. I went ahead and sent it to Microsoft. I'm curious how that deals with what they do with it. But you can see how quickly... Okay. 
So this time, they weren't able to stop it. Last time, because I was doing writing the batch files that then modified registry with really old techniques, like those extremely old techniques, it caught it. So Microsoft is catching up, but this is absolutely the cat and mouse game that happens. That took me about, what, I don't know, 30 seconds to fix. I was like, hey, you know what? I don't need those back doors. There's other stuff that we can do, which there is, especially in the really, really updated versions. But you can see now if I try to open up this encrypted TM, it's got the, it can't find the app to even open it, right? So all I did was make that simple change, regarbled it, changed nothing, executed it there. I even sent the file to Microsoft and it went ahead and ran and then encrypted uh, the entire C users folder. And this is exactly um, what the point of this is. And so, good. I was worried for like a second that that was definitely not going to work out, but it did. Okay, so we're in a good spot now. I'm going to upload this new version to I'm Ironcat-public, and it's something you can now use to test your environments, even with some of these awesome improvements that Microsoft has made to stop some of these old school things from working. Um, but I, ideally what we do is this exact thing. I'm going to hop in. We're going to look at what techniques still work. We'll identify even those old batch files that were located in different folders, and then we'll modify it so that it, it live evades Microsoft Defender, even with everything turned on. So thank you so much for joining me, and we'll do this again next time. Again, remember, you have to test your stuff. We have no idea if it actually works, and that's the entire intent of this. As we're getting to a point where this is past antivirus, now test your stuff, test your detections, test your EDR, test your network detections, which you certainly should see stuff from this, and test your people, test your security organization. That's the point. Okay, thank you so much, and have a good night.